We're facing a crisis, not only of biodiversity, but that of multiple interlinked crises, so whether it's the food crisis, climate change, and the debt crisis. And of course, all these crises actually impact developing countries and uh, marginalized peoples in developing countries, such as peasants and indigenous people and women disproportionately. The fact is that we actually need to address these crises uh, from a systemic point of view. We're losing biodiversity at probably in fastest decline at any point in human history. Industrial agriculture is a major driver of biodiversity loss in several ways. One of course is land use change uh, and agricultural intensification, pollution from agrochemicals uh, particularly, uh, we've got overuse of uh, synthetic uh, nitrogen fertilizers, which of course also contribute to the climate crisis. And agriculture is a main driver uh, of the climate crisis, which is then a driver of biodiversity loss. So, so as you can see, these are all in interlinked. Agroecology is really about the management, the sustainable management of agricultural biodiversity. It's rooted in biodiversity and it brings about multifunctional benefits. For example, adaptation to climate change, uh, socio-ecological resilience, as well as um, for livelihoods, for nutrition issues. It's uh, very much about the agency and the empowerment of indigenous peoples, of uh, peasants and of women. So we are you know, trying to push the boundaries of these debates and bring much more an equity lens, a justice lens. And that means protecting the rights of indigenous peoples, of peasants and women, who are the ones who are conserving and sustainably using biodiversity. The evidence uh, shows that uh, biodiversity is best uh, protected in indigenous peoples, lands and territories. It's absolutely paramount that their rights are protected. Uh, as well as the rights of peasants. 